Hi everyone, in this video we're going to take an in-depth look at Ableton's warping. So I've got a couple of samples here. I've got this drum loop that I really like. I'm going to click and I'm going to drag that in on an audio channel. And I'm just going to delete these two MIDI channels. Whoops, a daisy. Uh, and that one there. So I'm going to click on the sample. I'm going to press a Z just to make it full screen. Um, and then I can come over down here and look at the clip view. So you see that by default, Ableton has warped this sample. And it's at 90 BPM. It's changed my host uh, BPM to 90 as well. And it's got this on beats. So you can see that Ableton has a bunch of different ways that you can warp. But beats by default for anything rhythmic is generally the way to go. Um, and you can see here it's got a feature called preserve. And then it's got um, an arrow moving forward with a full stop. It's got arrows moving forward constantly. And then it's got arrows moving back and forth. And we'll get to those in just a minute. And then finally, we've got a hundred uh, a, a slider that we can take from 100 down to zero. And we'll talk about that too and what that does in a minute as well. So preserve. What preserve is doing is essentially when we're stretching an audio sample longer, we'll use longer as a good example, is right now what we can see is that this kick drum uh, is essentially taking up a whole beat. And if we stretched that out even further, instead of taking out one whole beat, if we doubled it in length, it would be taking two whole beats. So what it's doing is it's going to be preserving the transient because we're stretching that it's going to be really garbled. So what preserve does is it says, all right, well, I'm going to preserve that even though we're stretching it much longer, I'm going to preserve the original sound. And then in that um, moment where we've stretched it out, it's either going to play nothing. It's going to continue playing and looping over and over again or it's going to play forward and then back and i'm going to give you an example of that now so what i can do um, is i can i'll just zoom in on this a little bit closer i can basically half time this drum pattern so if i press play and we listen to it you can hear the natural speed and i'm just going to turn that off so we don't chase Okay, so then what I'll do is I'll double time it. So like I mentioned to you, that one drum kick that was a uh, kick drum that was from 1 to um, 1 1.2 now occupies all of this space. And if I'm preserving the transient and I turn this onto the arrow with the stop, you'll notice that it stops playing here. So what it's doing is it's preserving the sound of the original transient and then it's not playing anything else because it's not stretching it. It's just preserving how it originally sounded and it's letting the overall drum pattern be slowed down essentially or stretched, but it's not destroying the sounds of the original drum hits. So. What I can do is I can change that from just playing forward, I can change that to playing forward and backwards. And then you'll hear that it plays forward and then it reverses. Notice there, if I change it, it just stops. And if I play it and have it going forward, it's just playing and then repeating. And then what I can do with this volume slider is I can, uh, when it's in the middle of that effect, whether it's reversing back on itself or whether it's just playing forward and, and looping and repeating, I can automate how the volume um, is affected during that time. So if I bring that down to 80, you'll notice the volume's coming down. And if I bring it down even more, and if I change it on to back and forth, so 
So that is based on the transients that it's marking out. And you can see what Ableton is interpreting as a transient. So we know that this is definitely a transient and then it's put another marker in here, a marker in here, marker in here, et cetera, et cetera. What we can do is we can manually tell it which transients we want to preserve. So we could have it only preserve the um, every quarter note, for example. And if I put that on the stop, So in between, it's not playing anything. But on the, each of those quarter notes, and it's playing them, and it's preserving the way that they sound, even though we've stretched it out. Heaps. 16th notes. Or oh, 1 over 8. 1 over 8 is cool, because it kind of almost feels like we're delaying it, or something's going on. And then if I put it on reverse, Put it on 1 over 32. And on transients again. So that's the beat mode. So it's essentially we can stretch or slow down the sample, but it's going to try and preserve the original transient hits. And then it's also going to put an additional effect on things, whether it's going to just play that original drum hit forward and then stop uh for as long as that transient at um because it's calculating the length of the transient so it'll play until that point and then it'll stop um or it'll play over and over again or it'll play forward then back forward then back to give us um a reversing sort of effect So the next warp mode is tones. And for that, I'll use a vocal sample. So I've got this one from Splice. I'll pull it in um, and I'll drop it there. And I'm just going to slice off the end. I don't want the end of it. Um, I'm going to turn the warping off to preserve the natural, um, the natural length of it and the natural um, sound of it. So let's have a listen. <gasps> Okay, I'm going to go um, control J to consolidate that. And now it's warped it. Uh, so what I can do is I can stretch it out. So I'm going to stretch it out, let's say two times and we'll have a listen and it's on beats. So let's see how that sounds. <laughs> so every now and then there's just these little hiccups that sort of um, make it a little bit inconsistent. So if we change it and we put it on tones, let's have a listen and see how it sounds. Maybe we've warped it just a bit much. I'll just slow it down a little bit. Just half timed it. Cool. So that sounds quite good. And if we um, wanted to use that, it's probably best that we took that out because that sounds really breathy and digital. But otherwise, it's preserved it relatively well. And then we can play around with the grain size here in order to try and get it sounding even smoother. So tones is perfect for vocal warping. We'll move on to texture. So I've got this atmosphere. Um, atmospheres are good for texture because they're something that generally doesn't have too much of a, like a pitch or a tonality to it. Um, so let's go ahead and put it on texture and let's have a listen. So if I stretch that out, so with the grain size, we're able to either get a bit of a smoother sound or a bit more of a robotic sound. And that's based on the way that it's sort of looping the audio around. So. That 
that sounds quite smooth and then flux this uh, adds in a bit of random fluctuation or randomness into the mixture so you'll notice at the beginning there in particular there's kind of like random like volume changes in that sort of thing if the flux is at zero more consistent So that's texture, and you can get some really cool sounds out of texture, out of all of these warp modes. But then finally we'll talk about repitch, and then I'll just go ahead and just do some sort of creative things and show you how I can mess around with audios, audio and mangle things. So repitch, um, if we play that. Because we have doubled the time of this atmosphere, We've essentially stretched it, which in theory pitches it down. So if we're thinking about something like a turntable and we're playing audio at the regular speed that that turntable should be played at, but then we grab the slider and we start slowing that down, we'll notice that the pitch of the, the kick drum or whatever's in the audio will start coming down and it'll start sounding deeper. If it's a vocal, it'll sound more sort of manly. And if we pitch it up, if we go the other direction, If we go even further, makes it more high pitched and it essentially making it sort of chip, chip, um, what do they call it? Chip tuny. So repitch mode is a really great mode for um, sort of doing some really nice pitch, obviously pitch adjustments, but it's definitely the best. If you just want to take an audio sample, let's say it's at 90 BPM and you just want to double time it and pitch it down. Um, if it's in the key of your track, so let's say you've got a sample that's at 90 BPM and it's in the note of G, if you pitch it down, uh, if you double its time, it'll pitch it down essentially an octave and then it should still be in key. That sounds really nice. Cool. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to grab that that um, drum sample again, drums, and we'll come to that, and we're going to mess around with it, and we're going to use, instead of just using the beat mode, let's go ahead and use um, the, well, we'll use repitch to start with, so if I repitch and I double the time, Want to texture? Change it to tones. Tones doesn't really do much to it. like interesting to that. Beats. Make it even slower. That's really cool. And let's go more creative. So how far can we take this? Ping pong delay, uh, filter, reverb. Sweet, so first we'll filter it. I'm going to use, I really prefer to use these um, LFOs instead of using the internal FLO because I can actually see what's actually happening with it properly. So I can say, all right, 40, yeah. 
and then maximum, let's go 85. So we've just changed that drum loop into an interesting texture, just like that. Um, and you could use something like that as a psychedelic background in one of your trippy tunes. Full power. We could also make this pad. Uh, we take a reverb. Put a huge. Put it on high quality. What we could do is we could duplicate. Um, put that on 100%. Freeze. Flatten. Okay, so uh, we can come back to this. We can turn the warping off. And essentially, we have. They work nicely together. So you've just made another atmosphere that you could then call your own because essentially you just made it. together because they are made out of each other. Hopefully that gives you some ideas for going ahead and making some weird stuff. I'll see you guys in the next video.